Hello everybody, I'm here with my friend Padma Priya and um, I'm very excited to chat with him to get his thoughts on releasing attachment to trauma, helping release trauma to come to terms with it with letting go. So we go back a long time, 15 years. Yep. We met when he came from the Buddhist center, see he's Buddhist, and I, when I was at university, uh, what was it, was it two of you, was it three of you? Ordained. Two to start with, and then there was three of us. Yeah. yeah. So a few members from the Croydon Buddhist Centre would come to our university to teach well, meditation. So yeah. Meditation Society was my last year of uni, and uh, I was quite keen to de-stress. So that's where we met. Did it work? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it opened up my eyes to a, a new world, really, and I was fascinated with not just meditation, but the tenets of Buddhism, really. So, uh, after, since then, I used to go to the Croydon Buddhist Centre and whilst I don't go there anymore, we still kept in touch. And yeah, I just wanted to use this opportunity to sit down 15 years after we've met to just get it on camera because we'd always go for walks and talk about the nature of suffering <laughs> and, you yeah. know, I admire what you have to say about this. So, where do we start? Well, I could probably start where I kind of come in on it, I suppose. Um, I think that if I was somebody who was out there listening to this, I'd think, well, what qualifies you to talk on that sort of subject in the first place? And I suppose uh, I, I would say initially um, that sort of like the first memory I have is of uh, one of my uncles being wheeled out under a red blanket. And it, uh, that might tell you my age because they don't do red blankets anymore. But um, uh, he was wheeled out. Uh, dead into the back of an ambulance um, and, I put, and, and that was very significant for me um, and then a little while later I, I think it's sometime around about 11 or 12 uh, things weren't going well and uh, I just sort of thought well what's the point um, you know what is the point in all of this and, and uh, you know I got my hands and knees and I, I did some praying and found that that didn't work at all um, and that nobody answered. Um, so I was pretty much stuck with this, uh, what the hell was the point? And I guess my whole life has then led uh, to trying to find some way to understand that innate suffering that I think everybody has. And I think as time's gone on, as I've worked through uh, going to India, Asia generally, uh, training as a yoga teacher, coming to Buddhism and so on, I think the many, many people that I've met, the, the one consistent thing, uh, uh, and somewhat gratifyingly, I suppose, is the first noble truth of Buddhism, is that uh, there is suffering. Um, yeah. And it doesn't matter who it is, they all seem to have their story. Exactly, yes. And this is so relevant to the work that I do with my counselling, just to emphasize that everyone suffers there is no one who is exempt from suffering sometimes we like to fantasize that for example we've been dumped and our partner is living like their best life ever very happy and you're the one who's miserable it's like no that is just a fantasy it's not real everyone suffers you don't know you can't see it visibly sometimes but they do yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and i think that from the buddhist perspective they are there is a certain level of suffering that is just innate in being a human being. They, you're not going to avoid that, you know. Uh, if the Buddha dropped a brick on his foot, he's still going to hurt, you know. You don't suddenly avoid all of that normal rough and tumble play that goes on in life. But for me, uh, what Buddhism tries to point towards and tries to deal with is the human condition and its it's the bit that you add on to it that makes everything ten times worse than it really is. Um, and that is, that is the sort of nub of it, I guess, uh, from the Buddhist perspective. Is, is, is that it's, it's never going to eradicate suffering. And people that think you're going to get rid of suffering altogether, uh, in my experience and my opinion, uh, are just dreaming. But mm. I think that if you can avoid the suffering that you add to uh, an already painful situation, um, you're going to move beyond it much quicker. Um, yeah, I suppose that's... Mm. <clears throat> so, um, one aspect of Buddhism which I really find is helpful is meditation. 
So how I often tell my clients, and I've made some videos on my channel about meditation and coming to being the observer, and how this helps with letting go of attachments. So people who don't really understand Buddhism, sometimes they have this view that it means like being apathetic and not caring about anything. Hmm. What do you think hmm. about this? Yeah, I think, uh, well, one of the things that comes to mind is that uh, some spiritual people are religious but not all religious people are spiritual. So I need to define what I mean by that term, okay? So spiritual is somebody who's working on that element of the human condition that allows them to be the best they can be or to be as happy as they can be or uh, to hopefully to go beyond themselves and actually, you know, just be the best uh, social uh, being uh, lifting everything up I guess so for me a spiritual being is somebody who uh, is always looking to try and um, raise themselves and others uh, mm. uh, uh, in what they do religion in my opinion is a is a subscribing to a belief system now I have no doubt that there are Buddhists out there that will disagree with me and I'm sure they will say that uh, Buddhism is a religion but it's not Buddhism, in my opinion, is, is it's a spiritual practice. Um, it was called Buddha Dharma uh, for many, many years. It's only when the West got involved in the 60s and 50s and 60s, and then it got chucked in with all of the other isms. Um, and I've no doubt that there are some Buddhists that are religious. Um, but the central core teachings of Buddhism are all about going beyond self and other, realising that... Um, that you never really quite see things the way they really are and that the only real response to that is to let go. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, yeah, I guess I, it's probably worth pointing that out. Um, so you don't have to be Buddhist to live a spiritual life. Um, you can be, uh, you can even be a religious Buddhist, if you like, which is where you just believe in it. But mm. um, now... I think that's a bit problematic because the teachings themselves are to try and get you to actually do something. Um, going back to my original story about getting on the hands and knees and praying, you know, Buddhism is all about nobody else is going to do it other than you. If you don't make that effort, if you don't try to work with your mental states, you're not going anywhere, really. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So I'm sorry, uh, that might sound a bit harsh, but... Oh, it's true, though. Yeah, yeah you, only you can do the work. You've got to take responsibility for this. Mm. So mm. it's it's part of it. The similarities in counselling, for example, when you have to take back that locus of control, so you're taking responsibility for your own mindsets, for your own thoughts. Mm. You know, you choose your thoughts like you choose your clothes in the morning. Mm. You're mm. choosing what to dwell on. And for me, the practice of meditation gave me, I guess, better discipline in doing that hmm. rather than impulsively getting caught up in any thought that was stuck in my head and dwelling hmm. on certain emotions and hmm. a acting out certain behaviours which were self-destructive. Hmm. So meditation really helped in me focusing on that and giving myself more of a choice about how to choose how to react. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a lovely... Uh I'm not. I mean, a lot of stuff that's in Buddhism, I, I found has been has been borrowed from lots of other things. So this might not be strictly Buddhist, but um, there is this lovely little story of uh, if you chuck an elephant into a puddle, all the water will jump out. If you chuck it into the ocean, it barely makes a ripple. And I think this is a metaphor mm. for what of the mind in an ideal situation. So if you can open out through the practice of meditation or in whatever way that works for you. Um, if you can learn to train your mind to open out and to experience the full situation, to be present in the mm. moment, uh, not caught up in the past, not projecting into the future, yes. and actually expand your horizons, even chucking an elephant in is not going to cause you anything like the same amount of stress. Um, whereas if your world is so tight, um, you're going to struggle. Uh, a friend of mine once said that uh, addiction... Uh, in his mind was an ever decreasing social circle so the more addicted you are to something and, and, I, and I've thought about this and I think this is exactly the same with mm. mental states the more addicted you are to something the more, the more adamant you are and the more concrete you are around things the smaller and smaller your world will get the less and less people are going to 
uh, engage with you. You're going to miss stuff in life because you've only got a very narrow perspective. So. Absolutely. And the people you choose in your life are going to be the enablers and people who join in in that particular addiction. Absolutely. And, yeah. You're, and it forms like a deep set groove in your mind when you're constantly acting out this cycle that is, you know, seeking out whatever it is you're addicted to. Mm, mm. So, yeah, again, for me, it really helps learning about meditation, mindfulness, for mm. one thing, and mm. learning about the nature of suffering and yeah, yeah, yeah. the importance of letting go of our attachments. And it's not just to things, it's to it's that the addiction ultimately, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, there's a new line of thought that I've been mulling over recently, and it's it, uh, uh, we talk in terms of attachment in the case of Buddhism, but maybe the modern word these days would be addiction. Um, and you can be addicted to anything. You can be addicted to a person. You can be addicted to a, a particular view of the world, a set of circumstances. Essentially, what is kind of happening is is that, and it's almost irrelevant to the story, is is that you're trying to get a hit of a certain set mix of chemicals that are present in your body. And regardless how you get that, whether it be through something uh, positive or through something negative, you're not really that bothered. What ultimately you're trying to do is get that hit of that, hit of that uh, chemical rush. Mm -hmm. So maybe in the case of uh, uh, a relationship, maybe, I kind of see it as like, well, as, uh, if I can argue this point enough and I can make myself feel bad enough, and, and, and I get really angry about it. I get a hit of all of these chemicals. And it's just a, it's just a, it, essentially you're dependent upon a hit of chemicals. Yeah. And your mental associations with that chemical. It's as if like, just because you've got adrenaline pumping around your body, that that's a good thing for you. And whilst it is in certain circumstances, it's incredibly tiring and wearing on the body if you're in it all the time. And if you keep trying to repeat that over and over and over again by reinforcing your negative mental patterns or even positive mental patterns um, you're going to find that you're soon going to get very tired you know worn out